Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is kind of interesting again, made a little bit more difficult by the units that we're using. So we have a metal buoy, the mass, or essentially I should say the weight, the mg, is equal to 3200 pounds. So let's call that mg, and we'll probably change that to mg as well. So we have a metal buoy that has a, a weight of 3,200 pounds, which is situated in salt water, presumably the sea or the ocean, and it has a cross-sectional area of three feet. Salt water has a density of about 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter because the extra minerals and salts are, that are dissolved in the water. Then a person gets on top of the buoy that has a weight of 150 pounds. and that causes the buoy to go down somewhat, let's call that distance x. And the question is, how much is that? What is the value for x? How much lower will the buoy be when a 150 pound person gets on top of it? So how do we deal with that, especially with those units? Well, what we can say is that the additional amount of buoy that's below the surface will be, let's say, this amount right here. So that'll be the additional amount of, of displaced liquid because the person that's standing on top of the buoy and so that would be let's call it the delta V the additional volume and of course if the buoy is that much further down then this distance from there to there would also be equal to X so this distance here would also be X and then of course we have what we call the cross-sectional area which can be calculated because we know the diameter all right so now we can say is that the buoyancy force or the additional buoyancy force required to support the person is equal to the additional rho vg which is going to be equal to the weight of the person now of course what's changing here is the volume so that would be the density the density of the liquid or density of the water times the change in the volume times g is equal to <clears throat> the mass times g or the weight of the person so essentially <clears throat> what we have here is we have the density of the water times the change in the volume now that would be the cross-sectional area times the change in height which in this case would be x so let's call x times a that would be the change in the volume and we're looking for x times g is equal to m times g now normally we would cancel out the g's but notice we're given the weight and the uh, the weight of the person not the mass of the person so we'll leave the g there what about the density of the water how do we deal with that we're given that the density is 1030 kilograms per cubic meter but we're given pounds for weight of the buoy and weight of the person so we should convert that to a density in terms of pounds per cubic feet so how do we convert that so essentially one kilogram weight is equal to 2.205 pounds so notice we can normally not convert kilograms which is mass to pounds which is weight but if we think of a kilogram weight that is equal to 2.205 pounds so when we use that conversion, we can go ahead and convert from kilograms to pounds. So now what we need to do is find the density, the density of water, which is 1,030 1, kilograms weight per cubic meter, if we want to think about it that way. So now we convert that to pounds. So that would be uh, 2.205 pounds per kilogram weight one kilogram and then of course we need to convert cubic meters to cubic feet so we need cubic feet cubic meters so one cubic meter and uh, let's see we have to divide by hmm let's do it this way one zero point three oh four eight and we have to cube that so one cubed one cubic foot can be converted to cubic meters like that because a foot is 0 0.3048 meters I don't know if you can see that maybe I want to go ahead and write that a little clearer so now we have kilograms cancel out cubic meters cancel out and we're left with pounds per cubic foot let's go ahead 
and calculate how many pounds per cubic foot that is. So we have 1030 times 2.205 times 0.3048 cubed equals, uh, let me try it again, 1030 times 2.205 times 0.3048 cubed equals, and there it is, 64.3 pounds per cubic foot. So the density of water can also be considered to be 64.3 pounds per cubic foot and of course that would be rho times g because now we have it in terms of weight per cubic foot instead of mass per cubic foot. All right now we can go ahead and solve this for x. So we have if we come over here we can say that x is equal to the weight of the person divided by the density of water times g. We'll put that together and times the cross-sectional area. So x is equal to 150 pounds divided by 64.3 pounds per cubic foot. That's the density of seawater per cubic foot and cross-sectional area. All right, cross-sectional area. That would be equal to the radius. The radius would be half the diameter, so we um, the radius, which is 1.5 feet, pi r squared. So actually, let me write the pi first. So I have pi times the radius squared, which is 1.5 feet quantity squared. Now notice we have square feet, cubic feet, so I have 1 over feet that goes to the top. So that means I have foot pounds, 150 pounds. So I end up with feet and the pounds cancel out. All right, I got the correct units here. So let's see what we end up with. 150 divided by 64.3 divided by 1.5 squared divided by pi equals, and we end up with 0 0.33 feet. As the distance, the buoy goes further into the ocean water when a 150 pound person climbs on top of the buoy. And so again, we have the weight of the person, the weight density of the seawater, and the cross-section area is pi times the radius squared, the radius being half the diameter. And that's how we find the distance. That's how it's done.